Hello there, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts. And I found a pattern I just wanted to share with you really quickly. I found this on Ravelry as I was looking for uh, small historical projects to work up. And this one is the Silver Queen Handkerchief. Now, in itself, it's not a historical pattern, but the uh, person used some vintage Victorian lace around the edge, and I'm, I'm a sucker for vintage Victorian lace knitting. Okay, so anyway, you'll find this on Ravelry, and the author is Lake Salt Knits. Hopefully I got that right, but I will link, uh, put a link to the pattern down below in the description. And it, you know what, it's just the cutest thing. Uh, the first thing is that this pattern requires uh, zero needles and I am not a big fan of small needles or small yarn. I always say I don't knit lace because of that. Uh, usually the smallest I'll do is socks and I do mine's on a three. But I was curious enough that I went ahead and found my zero needles. I used the bamboo ones instead of the metal ones because these ones have a better point on them. And I'm using uh, a circular needle. And for the most part, I tend to prefer to use a circular needle most times. And as usual, I forgot to I put my phone on Do Not Disturb while I'm recording. Okay, so at any rate, um, the first thing I grabbed, like I said, I don't really keep lace yarns. So the first thing I grabbed was some of the uh, cotton uh, yarn that I had. There's just this, and I always get this. I don't know why I get this because I know it's not like a thing I really want to use. But I have it. Like I think everybody else has this, you know cotton crochet thread all over the place and it's on sale at marks for like two for a dollar and I was thinking I should buy some but I couldn't really figure out why because I don't really use it so at any rate I got this and you know when I got it I thought that it was a size 10 and as I was knitting I was like wow this is a little big and of course once I found the actual size 10 bob and I realized this one is the size 3 but still, it worked out very nicely. It's very nice and dense. Now, the pattern itself is not really hard. You know, when you make the, the square here, basically you're starting with casting on four and you're increasing on either side until you get to 50 in the middle and then you're decreasing down. And that, that made a really small hanky for me. It's kind of like a, the ones that you see, you know, when they're folded into the suit pockets and I have lots of suit pockets to fold them into. Uh, but I did this one with 60 and before I did my decreases because I wanted a little bigger. What gets a little complicated is the Victorian edging around here um, and not even the pickup. There was a pickup across the slipped edges, which was easy, but the Victorian edging and the pattern is not hard. It's just um, when you're, you've got this lace that you're knitting upwards and the handkerchief body is hanging down. And so you're trying to knit uh, with these little tiny needles and keep things from sliding off with this weight pulling you down. It, it got a little awkward, but I actually found that I could memorize a pattern after a while. And I just had to be really careful at my bind offs, not to make them too tight for when I block them. So I did have a, a time blocking this guy because I had to consciously remember to make these bind offs nice and loose. So there's a few places where I forgot and it made it a little harder to, to get a good opening with the bind off. But if you see around this corner, it's really loose around here. But I like it. It's such a cute thing and it was so cute that I decided I wanted to do it in something more delicate. I really want to make one of these in Angora. And of course, if I use Angora, it becomes totally useless uh, as a hanky. And you know what? It's still probably totally useless as a hanky anyway. But it's great for decoration. So if you can imagine this in fluffy, soft, creamy Angora, uh, looking oh so delicate in your pocket, 
Um, I also have some lace cashmere, which I bought, and I don't even know why. So the one of those seemed like a good idea at the time, and I know I don't do lace. But what I did have on hand, which I wanted to try out and couldn't figure out what to do with, is this linen. Um, a friend, uh, Linda Spenden Weaves on Ravelry, gave me this single ply linen from one of the friends in uh, from her guild. And I've been trying to figure out how to best use this. I haven't spun linen myself. I have a linen and wool uh, bat downstairs in storage. And I just haven't got around to it because I haven't figured out what I want to do with it yet. But I decided I would give this a whirl, but I certainly was not going to knit it up as a single. I did try, yes. I didn't like the way it looked, even with the zero needles. And so I decided to ply it. And, uh, of course I took the advice of working with linen while it's wet and wet it and plied it and got a pretty decent yarn. So here is the linen one laid it out for you, still on the needles and I'm doing the decreases now and I'm really enjoying how this is working up. Okay. So. Oh, that's all really curly. And I'm actually knitting it off the bobbin or I would show you uh, what the skein looks like. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that and start the video again to show you what it looks like once I've cast off the main body of the handkerchief and starting the lace with the linen. The knitting is done and I've woven the ends um, as best as I possibly could. Seamed it together. I think did an okay job with that. And now um, I'm going to um, do a little wet finishing to it. Going to wash it in some really hot water and give it a little very gentle squeeze. And I think I'm going to steam iron it. And we'll see how it looks afterwards. Washed, ironed, dried, and this is our tidy little handkerchief. Of course, we know that linen softens with age, so this will be interesting to see how this cute little one softens with age. Here's its mercerized cotton companion. And it's interesting to look at the difference in size from this thin lace and this number three crochet thread. The pattern will be down below in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and you have a chance to make this cute little hanky. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.